very well-meaning citizens who would have preferred the peaceful process of arguments reached behind closed doors to the furore of the past few days. Yet far from being daunted, I take what has happened not to be symptomatic of the hazards of democracy, but of a show of the strength of democracy in action. We're seeing being displayed before our very eyes, not the triumph of disorder, but the value of openness in governance and of the need, the crucial need, for the people to be fully and accurately informed. You cannot claim to believe in democracy unless you have faith in the people, faith in their inherent goodness, faith in their capacity to make the right decisions given the right information. It is this faith in the people that has shaped my entire political career. And it is this faith that propels me to lead an open and transparent government. I was fully aware of how such agreements had been secured to cooperation, collaborations with the United States of America. How else would we have known that in some instances we have provided them with facilities for the movement of personnel and equipment to help some of our nation, our neighbors who are facing security and health challenges? And how else would we have exposed the unspeakable hypocrisy of the fraternity of some frontline politicians who make a habit of running with the hares and hunting with the hounds, who secretly wallow in the largesse of the United States of America, while at the same time promote anti-American sentiments to a populist constituency. Submitting this agreement to open scrutiny now allows us to clear the unhealthy fog that has clouded our relations with the United States of America. The conduct of Ghana's foreign policy and its relations with the nations of the world has happily been traditionally above the partitions of partisan politics. Allowing for the normal differences of approach, which will sometimes occur, our foreign policy has been consistently bipartisan, and no successor government has found the need to tamper with any agreement of a non-commercial nature entered into by its predecessor. We respect the age-old norms of international diplomacy that when a country is accorded privileges and concessions to another, these are not removed or altered by a successor government unless, firstly, the conditions under which they were granted have been reversed, or secondly, there's proven evidence of abuse. My government came to know that Ghana had entered into a cooperation agreement with the United States of America in 1998, 2000, and under the government of my predecessor in 2015. We were satisfied that the conditions which necessitated the agreement, namely the creeping threat to the peace of the region, had not disappeared. If anything, the threat had increased and therefore the need had arisen for continuing with our cooperation. No suggestion had ever been made that the United States of America had abused any of the privileges or concessions granted under any of these agreements. And it would have thus been a, a deemed an unfriendly act to attempt to deny them any concession granted them under these agreements. Fellow Ghanaians, Above everything else, the crux of the matter is this. Ghana has built a formidable reputation for its contribution to peacekeeping around the world. Although these peacekeeping operations have always been under the aegis of the United Nations, no one doubts the fact that they have been made possible by the contributions largely of the United States of America. The cooperation agreement which has subsisted 
which we have approved, can only enhance the global effort to preserve the peace in our region. It is important also to state that the conditions of the agreement mirror closely the conditions under which Ghana participated in peacekeeping operations under the United Nations. When our troops go on most peacekeeping duties, they do not carry their national passports, they carry their military identity. Quite apart from how this agreement involves the military as an institution, it is worth pointing out that virtually since independence, Ghana has had very fruitful relations with a range of foreign embassies and major international institutions. These include the United Nations, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the African Development Bank, the International Finance Corporation, amongst others. All these agencies enjoy similar conditions as those which the cooperation agreement offers to the U.S. military here. No one has dared suggest that granting these foreign embassies and international institutions these concessions constitute an attack on the sovereignty of Ghana. Nor has anyone also felt that the concessions have in any way worked against the interests of Ghana. Indeed, I have no doubt that it will be the general consensus of all well-informed Ghanaians that this nation has benefited significantly from the presence and activities of these institutions over the past decades. It is clear to me that if the people of Ghana knew the conditions under which foreign embassies and our friendly international institutions operate in Ghana, nobody would have been surprised that a defense cooperation agreement would make such provisions. Such knowledge would have spared many citizens the genuine anxiety and concern they have felt about the agreement. It is my firm belief that the case for openness and transparency in our governance has been clearly demonstrated and the argument conclusively settled by these events. But we have to take issue with the frontline politicians who have sought to mislead the people in this blatant manner and those who, for mischievous purposes, leak the document destined for the scrutiny of Parliament prematurely to a section of the media who then went on to describe it as a secret document. How could a document intended for the consideration of Parliament be described as a secret document? How could anyone who has been in government and run the administration of this nation feign ignorance of the conditions under which Ghanaian troops undertake peacekeeping operations or the conditions under which our co country has collaborated with major international institutions. It is difficult to understand that such people, knowing what they do know, would go about so blatantly to confuse people and go so, so far as calling for the overthrow of our democracy a democracy that has become the beacon of good governance in Africa, a democracy that has survived for a quarter of a century and encompassed even the most irresponsible episodes of ill governance in a state of unity and stability, a democracy that has provided the framework for systematic developments in our social and economic welfare and assured us of the longest uninterrupted period of stable constitutional governance in our history? Surely, this is the kind of cynical manipulation by reckless self-seekers, which in the fullness of time, the people of Ghana will acknowledge and condemn. And I'm sure that as the facts become clear and widely available, and as the people come to terms with the evidence, they will reject the falsehood and deliberate attempts to destabilize our peaceful country. Truth is sacrosanct. So let me state with the clearest affirmation that Ghana has not offered a military base and will not offer a military base 
to the United States of America. Indeed, the United States of America has not made any request for such consideration. And consistent with our established foreign policy, we will not consider any such request. However, in consideration of the realities of our circumstances and the challenges to peace in our region in our time, we have deemed it prudent to continue the cooperation agreement with the United States of America. It is our firm belief that the agreement will help enhance our defense capability and offer an important layer of support in our common effort to protect the peace in our region. Fellow Ghanaians, let me conclude by saying how outraged I am by the defamatory comments from my political opponents, some of whose patriotism can be so easily questioned, that the sovereignty of this country has been sold by my government and myself. I will never be the president that will compromise or sell the sovereignty of our country. I respect deeply the memory of the great patriots whose sacrifice and toil brought about our independence and freedom. I have stood with you, the Ghanaian people, all my adult life, fighting for our individual and collective rights. Everything I have done since assuming the great honor and privilege of serving you as President of the Republic demonstrates that I remain focused on building a self-reliant, free, prosperous Ghana, which will be able to make her own unique contribution to the growth and development of Africa and the world. Let us concentrate and spend our energies on working together to achieve that goal of a happy and prosperous Ghana and reject the hypocrisy of the naysayers who led our country into bankruptcy and the worst economic record of modern Ghanaian history. Let us rise above them and build the Ghana of our destiny, the land of freedom, justice, progress, and prosperity. May God bless us all in our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Good night.